the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, we will continue our commentaries on the first epistle of St. John. And now we are in the second chapter. And as we said before, St. John focusing on the nature of our Lord Jesus Christ to defend the Christian faith, to stand against the Gnosticism, and also to focus on the commandment of love because this is the key word and the key commandment uh, for the new life. Verse number 14, I have written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. St. John is relating to the, the, the strength, the spiritual power with the word of God. When you study the Word of God, when you keep the Word of God in your heart, when you're trying to practice the Word of God, to, following, to follow the model of our Lord Christ, now you are strong. But when you forget the Word of God, your mind will be fooled by the Word of, of this world, and you will follow devil, and you will be just like anyone walking but walking in darkness. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. He made it again that you overcome the wicked one because you are Christ-like. You have the power of the Lord in, inside your heart. You have the Holy Spirit. You believe in Christ and you love everyone. Do not love the world or the things in the world. You all know this commandment. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So if you love this world, the desires of usual people, of the, the lusts of, the, of this world, if you desire to be rich, if you like to be very much important, if you uh, are busy what to do in order to be the best one in this earth, actually you love the world and you are not anymore loving God. Because if you love this world, you cannot love God because God is pushing us to live the eternal life, to start our eternity from now to enjoy the kingdom of heaven inside our heart from now, to be filled with his spirit, to love the same way he loved people. So if you are busy with this world, you cannot be busy with the afterlife, with the world coming, with the heaven kingdom. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So, St. John is saying that what, what's in this world? It's either the lust of the flesh. People are very busy with the flesh, eating, drinking, having a time of rest, uh, wearing dresses, and they are busy with the flesh lusts. So they, it takes them to many, many bad things. And another point is the lust of the eye. The eyes, you know, may desire to have everything. To, uh, the eye may look in a lustful way to gain money more and more. So the eye starts the problem. That's why the pure eye will make you a pure heart one. The third one is the pride of life. People are busy with with the pride, feeling superior than others. And these three lines are the main, uh, you know, sources of all sins. If you just try to analyze any sin happening, whatever with the mind, with the actions, with the, uh, with the senses, you will see that it's always related to one of these three major sins or major sources of sins. 
the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of this life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So all people living on earth are busy with one or two or the three of these problems. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Very little number of people may be busy with the, with the desire for the eternal life. With the love given from God, and we, are, uh, we, we have to give it to everyone. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So the three major lusts of this world are telling us that this world will vanish, will go away, will pass away. There is always an end to the lust of the flesh with death. And there is always an end to the lust of the eyes with death. And there is always an end to the pride with death. So people are dying and that's the end of the story. But for the people of God, they have different ending because they are not focusing on this life, but the coming life. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So he made it in a different way, practicing the truth abiding in the word of God. Following the commandment of love, he called it now doing the, love, the will of God. So when you are busy with the will of God, God will the salvation of everyone, that all people know him and follow him. God needs to save everyone. Is happy saving everyone, but people are not busy with this salvation. They are busy with the world matters. So if you are following God, you will be busy with His will. His will, uh, thy kingdom become. That's the will of God. Little children, it's the last hour. What does he mean by the last hour? It was not the last hour literally, because it was written, you know, 1900 years. So it's not the last hour, but you should consider all hours at the last hour. Because you, cannot, you, you do not know when you will die. So you should consider your day is the last day, and this hour is the last hour because you know, time flies. And all people, when they come to the end, they feel that we, we did not live enough. We had no enough chances to do whatever we wished for. So it's the last hour, consider this. And you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. So, this verse, you know, explained that there were kind of teaching received by these people. These people believed without the uh, epistles or the gospel. They believed in the tradition, in the teaching of, of the church. The church started in the first century before writing the books of the New Testament. And the teaching of the church was always there. The truth was always one truth. And in this truth, the, the knowledge of the coming of the Antichrist before the second coming of Christ. So he is just repeating what the people uh, for no, new, he's telling them, as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. By saying so, St. John revealed the secret that Antichrist will come with the end of the days before the second of coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but still, 
The idea of Antichrist, the evil behind Antichrist, the movement of Antichrist will be always there. Devil is against Christ, so he is sending Antichrist people and Antichrist ideas. But this does not exclude that there will come a minute that as somebody will come and say that I'm Christ and he will be the big deceiver, the real Antichrist with the end of the days. But he's saying even now many Antichrists have come. So in all generations, there were the spirit of Antichrist uh, trying to push the truth away and to darken the minds of everyone. By which we know that it's the last hour. So when you see that the spirit of evil, the spirit of Antichrist is, you know, pushing the truth away, you should consider this is the last hour. It, you know, it, it gives us an alarm that we have to struggle more and to be ready because it's a real fight, spiritual uh, war against Antichrist. They went out from us. The Antichrist usually started with, from within the church. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. The same problem in all generations. The heretics who started the wrong teaching, who tried to take the church away from the truth, they, you know, appeared from within the church, but they were never faithful. They were not honest to the teaching received by the, the church. They are teaching their belief. They are proving their pride. They are not uh, following the will of God. They were motivated by the evil power. So we have to put in mind that that happened many times in all generations. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. So with the days, you can, you know, discern, you can see that these people were not of us, were not honest, were not real good living members in the church because there is a minute that they started to uh, push the church away in their way, not the way of God. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And this verse is very important. As he mentioned, the first chapter, the sacrament of confession. Now he is mentioning the sacrament of, of Myron because he's saying you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. So the church believed after baptism, all members of the church should be anointed with the holy oil to be altars of the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, you will be faithful. You will follow the commandments of the church. You will stick to the church teaching, to the tradition, the, the old tradition of the church, the teaching given by Christ through the apostles. You have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that not, no lie is of the truth. So let's uh, revive this, because sometimes when we read the gospel or the epistles, somebody may say, but I know these words, I read it before. Look, you know, even if you know, but you need to know it again. You, you need always to revise the truth because there is evil power pushing the truth away. Who is the liar but he who denied that Jesus is the Christ? The biggest lie that Jesus is not the Christ. This is one of the biggest lie given by devil to deviate the church one day. And you can see nowadays that millions of people do not believe in Jesus Christ as God. 
Millions of them do not believe him as the real man. Millions, you know, uh, missed the salvation because they do not want to believe in God and the incarnation of the Lord. Who is the liar but he who denied that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denied the Father and the Son. So you cannot say that people believe in the Father, but they do not believe in the Son. Whoever does not believe in the Son cannot believe in the Father. Don't consider anyone as a good believer just because he say that he believes in God the Father. The Father have had a Son. And you cannot say that I believe in God and you ignore the belief in the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever denied the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son had the Father also. So as given by the Lord himself, who um, saw me can see the Father, who believes in me believes in my Father. So we cannot, you know, just believe in one Father, God the Father, and does not believe in God the Son. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. We need to stand in the truth uh, strongly and to fix our minds on the truth given to the church. Let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. So we are brought up in a good church, the Orthodox, the Coptic Orthodox Church, and this truth was given to us as early as our early childhood. Through the church songs, through the teaching of our fathers and mothers, through Sunday school teaching, so let this abide in us. And this is the promise that He has promised us eternal life. Make sure that when you abide yourself in the Father and the Son, through the Holy Spirit, you are abiding yourself in the eternal life. You will be given the promise of eternal life through the same belief in God, the Holy Trinity, and the same life, the Orthodox life of loving everyone. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. So that's the theme of the epistle. He declared that that's the reason he wrote this letter, because people are trying to deceive the members of the church. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. So the Holy Spirit in our hearts and the same Holy Spirit controlling the church abides us in the truth and pushing us to overcome the evil power and the, uh, the lies around of, of the Antichrist. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but add the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So he's saying, just follow the church, follow the Holy Spirit of the church. Follow the Holy Spirit you had in the sacrament. Live a spiritual life guided by the Holy Spirit and you will be safe. You will be given the promise of eternal life. Glory to God. Amen.